Hi there, I'm back and so are you. First, before we get into what's going to happen for the Yeti in November, let me offer a trigger warning. Um, there might be some Trump voters who stumble on this channel. So it's only fair to warn you that we really, on this channel, we don't think it's okay for, you know, a lecherous, inarticulate, bankrupt white supremacist to be president of the United States. So if you think this is okay, I'm sure you've got channels you can watch. You know, you can go back to, you know, the fascist Breitbart and the nutcase Fox. Um, so we'll just give you a moment to move on. Now, many things have happened as always, but it was the booing followed by the lock him up chant. I confess, intrepid viewers, I would have played it 20 times. Um, there's something about it. Now, Morning Joe and others were saying, oh, you know, we don't want it to go that way. And I understand that as an intellectual position, but how satisfying was it? It'd have to be the ultimate narcissist nightmare to be booed publicly by tens of thousands of people. It was gold, as we say in Australia. It's a sporting reference, gold. There's even a hand sign that goes with it, gold. It was. Oh, deliriously happy about that. Then we had Sondland. He's changed his testimony, could be up for perjury. He said, I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything. It wasn't a quid pro quo. Oh, whoops. Yes, it was. These people couldn't lie straight in bed, could they really? You know. And then you've got the GOP, you know, the supposedly the patriotic party and supporter of the military and so forth have all been part of denigrating the testimony of, who was it, Alexander Vindman during the week. Cruel, slovenly behaviour, shocking, unforgivable. They don't deserve to really get to host a barbecue, let alone the country. It's appalling. Now, also, you'll be thrilled to know if you've missed it, Jared's been sued by Maryland for slumlording. He was warned and warned and warned and failed to comply in his rat-infested hovels. I think he has something like 1,500 apartments or something in New Jersey alone. These are the places that mortal, normal people live in in bad conditions because he won't spend on those properties. These aren't his high flying, bankrupt inducing properties. These are the, the ones where he takes rent from normal people and refuses to do basic landlord responsibilities. So he's going up in itself. It's not going to be the end of the world, but it made me remember, intrepid viewers, can anyone else remember? It was about 20 years ago. And a judge in Chicago was sick of this particular slumlord who kept appearing in front of him and then not doing what he was ordered to by the court. So in the end, he said, I'm not going to send you to jail. I am going to send you to live in one of your properties. And I think it was for nine months or something. I like that. So maybe Jared and Ivanka shouldn't go to jail. They should just be made to live in one of their own rental properties. And I'm not talking palatial here. Love to see that. Now, this is November for Trump. I am going to do three cards for each week. So let's have a look. October panned out much as we thought it would. So I'm drawing one card to set the tone and then three cards for each week. I'm using the Toss deck. Okay, come on down. Love. Oh, how cute is that? There has to be a warped twist to that. Oh, well, here we go with the warped twist. Now, week one. Now, with the two of cups, the thing about it, the, the entwined fish, swimming love. 
this is, I think, in reflection to him, actually, because of the lock him up chant, even, he's realising for the first time that people are falling out of love with him. And I think it's almost like this card should be reversed, but it wasn't. So on top, at best, this is him struggling with the adoration that he needs as oxygen coming through. So it, it's saying to me that he's going to demonstrate more and more extreme behaviours in what he thinks will bring back the love. How weird. Okay. So then we have the Knight of Cups. This is still a very emotional card. It is cups, right? There's, see the Cancerian crab there? So with this, I think what it's pointing to is this is tied. These are emotional cards. And remember, in recent little readings on him, he's moved almost totally into the emotional space. He doesn't have an intellectual space to revert to. He can't actually think. So, and he chooses not to, and now I think it's too late. I don't think he could, even if he was desperate to. So this is the card, and this is him accelerating in week one of November, accelerating, driven by this emotional lash or tide. He then gets the Fool card, right? Now, the Fool can be a very high esoteric uh, sort of card, or it can simply mean foolishness in the most straightforward, more recognisable way. The end of the first week isn't going to be too bad. It's softened by the star card. Okay. That's the card of inspiration and hope. So this is him moving into this um, sort of need to be loved thing that the first week will start off in a particular way. There's much more emotional charge, literally. This is a charging figure. It's an emotional charge. And we'll see more of his foolish behaviour. But it'll be somewhat softened by the end of week one. Now, week two. Oh, hello, Ivanka. Oh, revenge and power. All right. So the love card is on top of Ivanka. I wonder if something's going to come out about Ivanka in week two, the Empress, right? So just keep an eye on Ivanka, week two. Could possibly be the only person he actually loves or as near as a human uh, emotion as he could have. But then he goes crazy, the helicopter night. Week two, he goes totally mad on a revenge bender. Then, this is more the GOP, I think, the card of power. It's a closed circuit. It's literally like a closed circuit board. It's, they're having to close ranks to consolidate what's left of their power and that I think means the power over him which is obviously limited and the fact that they're battling public opinion now. The second week is going to be really critical for how the GOP are responding to what will be the next, excuse me, the next leg in these impeachment procedures. Week three, things will be hung up a bit there's a world and the nine of wands. So here, the, expect a bit of a delay in week three. Things will be moving a lot in week two. Week three, an unexpected delay, perhaps this could be for the Dems. The world card, in this case, in the top deck, it's the universe, so it's an even bigger picture than the world. It's, it's the card where 
it is obviously that the whole world is turning their attention to what is happening in America, but it is actively affecting other parts of the world, not the least of which is the military, I think. I think this is the Nine of Wands, it's a card of strength. I don't think this is Donald's personal strength because he doesn't have any internal fortitude. I think this is the military strength. I think there's going to be significant pushback from the military or the Pentagon as an, a sort of arm of government, if you like, the, the radiant sun. I think they're really going to pull in some Republicans and say, listen, look what happened with his debacle of handling the killing of al-Baghdadi. So not only did he put himself front and centre, as he always does, but he gave away military secrets, just blur out of his fettered face. Out it came. Now, this was conveying things to the world, like we got help from the Russians and we used Turkish airspace. What? You don't say this. He hasn't learnt from his first day, remember when he was blurting on about the Israeli intelligence to the Russians in the Oval Office, I mean. So I think there's going to be a military issue in week three. Okay, week four for the Donalds. So what's going to happen here? The card of prudence. Now, again, we're at the end of November now, which is my birthday. And he's not prudent. So I think, going back to this card for the GOP, I think in week four of November, you're going to see the GOP re-evaluating their fixation and still fairly solid defence of the Getty. I think we'll start to peel away in week four. Please. Then he gets the nine of swords, need I say more? The end of November is not going to be good for him. And adjustment, adjusting to a new way of being. What I feel here is happening too, just taking you back to these cards, he's going to be so wounded by week four as to be virtually taken out of action. That doesn't mean his little tiny fingers won't be twittering into the night, but he's a spent force by then, and they're going to have to adjust to what happens at that point. Now, I'd just like to do a few clarifiers here. I'm interested in this star card. I've worked out the love card the signifier for this reading, it refers to Ivanka. But I'm still mystified why he gets such a benevolent and lovely card here with the star in week one. Can we throw any light on what that is? He could have a small win of some sort. I mean, the courts are basically stepping up, but there just could be an incident that gives him hope for a minute in week one. What is that about? Oh, these are upside down, sorry. So it's the visit by the Signora. A woman visits him. A woman visits him looking for a way out, but jealousy takes over. So in other words, if you look at these cards here, in, I ask specifically in relation to the star card. So I think some woman comes in and gives him hope. She will describe to him what to wait for and to look for, but then he blows it because of petty jealousy. Hmm, interesting. 
petty jealousy. Well, that about sums up the man, doesn't it, in every way? All right, so intrepid viewers, those who want to stay, stay now because I'll talk to you about the t-shirts. So, as I said, we've got four designs. So one is Tarot Down Under, I'm an Intrepid Viewer. One is the shirts with eight or nine of the names we all use for him, you know, the Yeti, the Lion King, etc. Another one, oh, it's fantastic, the Ukraine clown posse with Trump, Putin and Giuliani. And a fourth one that's going to be the corker is Pelosi versus Trump. So I think three of them will be ready um, by tonight or tomorrow. I'm putting the link up, so go and have a look. If you can't navigate the site, don't worry, in the next couple of days, because it's one of those long URLs, apparently there's a technique you can use to shorten it, and I might replace the link during the next few days. Right, so just keep an eye on it, have a click, see where it takes you, but please, I'm not the one doing the actual site, so if you have any trouble navigating the site, don't email me or, or comment. I'll, I'll do my best to make sure it gets easier in the next few days, but I just want to let you know they'll be out there. Okay, so I'm here in the laundry in Sydney for another week or so. See you soon. Mwah, mwah. It's all going on. Oh, before I go. I'm also putting up the link because I mentioned last week they're calling for a big mobilisation on the eve of the impeachment vote. And I'm putting up, it's a, a coalition of um, progressive liberal groups and they're calling for everyone. Now, they're not talking about the vote this Thursday. That's just on impeachment procedural stuff. They're talking about the vote at the end of all the evidence where the Dems will say, yes, we now formally impeach the president and it goes to the Senate where it could well die in the arse because they are such treacherous horrors. But that's for another day. So that's the vote they're talking about. So in other words, there's no date. But as November unfolds, we will become aware of when that date will be. So be ready to mobilise. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for all the comments. Keep the thumbs up rolling. And I'll see you next time. Okay. Ciao for now. Oh, can't turn off soon. There we go.